Hi everyone, welcome back. I have another skincare reaction video for you and this time it is Selena Gomez. This is her routine on Vogue. She's actually doing more of a makeup look but she starts off with a little skincare routine and I wanted to take a look at this because first off, it's Selena and we all know how important she is. I've had a different perspective of her. I didn't grow up watching any of her shows. I only, you know, like in the last few years started listening to her music. Instead, what I've seen is a young girl who was a teen star become a pop star and now is starting to become you know a woman a businesswoman who is really trying to find herself but what really stands out to me about her is that she isn't just your typical teen star she is a teen star who has grown up with social media and a lens just always on her and that's a really hard way to grow up so it's really interesting to just see her you know take the reins and decide you know what I'm gonna go this route I can go any way that I want with my career and my life, and I'm gonna create this beauty line, and I'm gonna show you guys what I've been doing. And I'm really curious about the types of skincare products she's using. Since she is one, she did start a beauty line. It's makeup, but makeup doesn't look good unless you've got good skin and a good skincare routine. But two, she does have lupus, and lupus can really have an effect on your skin. And also, she is at that age where she's probably starting to think about what she's doing to her skin and what she's putting on her skin and how she wants to present herself. So I can't wait to watch this. This is on Vogue. I will leave a link below in the description box to the original video if you want to watch the whole thing because I'm pretty much going to stick with just the beginning part of it where it is her skincare routine. I am going to talk a little bit about the foundation that she uses as well, but after that, you'll have to watch the entire video separately. So let's get started. Hi everyone, it's Selena Gomez. I will be showing you my day to night look with some of my makeup products and others. So I can't wait to show you my routine. First step, I wash my face and I like to use um, the Skin Soothing Foam. And it actually helps because I have dry skin, but then on certain areas I have oily, which is really annoying. So I love that, I did that. As for moisturizer. All right, so we know that she washes her face in the morning. There is nothing wrong with that. It's actually totally fine to wash your face in the morning. Some people will even argue that it is the basis for the rest of your skincare routine. You have to get your skin nice and clean, and then all of your products that you use after that will really work better. And there is definitely some truth to that. For someone like her who says that they have, you know, a combination oily in the T-zone, dry on the outside type of skin. It's worth testing out the method of just like splashing some water on your face and letting your natural oils do their thing because sometimes your skin just needs to balance itself out. And the reason to not cleanse your skin in the morning is because you're trying not to freak it out. You're trying to let it balance itself out. So usually that works the best for people like her who have combination skin happening like this. I also realize that her autoimmune issues can also be causing some of the challenges that she has with her skin being that kind of a combination. I know it personally because I also have autoimmune issues and it really can mess with your skin. But taking a look at this cleanser that she's using, I'm assuming it's this one from SkinCeuticals. This product is meant for sensitive skin. It's for post-treatment skin. So in theory, it's supposed to be a very, you know, gentle, very basic cleanser and it should be fine to use in the morning. Moisturizer, I love the Tatcha, the Dewy Skin Care line. And it's so thick and yummy that you actually don't have to use that much of it. I think when I was younger, I didn't really take care of my skin because I didn't, I didn't really know why. You know, I was working since I was seven and had makeup on and figuring all that out. So I would say I didn't care until the last few years and I realized how important it was. Okay, so let's talk about first the moisturizer. We didn't see her go in with any serums. I do wonder why she's not using any serums, if she's got some reason for it where, you know, she just thinks that serums aren't working for her or she hasn't found one that she likes. But, you know, she is moving on to the moisturizer and this is the most important part of a skincare routine when you are going to put on makeup. Not because of your skin, but because of what the makeup is going to do and how it lays on your skin. This Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream is wonderful under makeup. It has ingredients that are nice and soothing to the skin, hydrating to the skin. There are antioxidants in it, and it just feels nice. It plays really well with makeup. You want a really rich moisturizer that's not going to feel like it's overly moisturizing your skin. You just want something like this that's going to give you that perfect base for your skin, and I would prefer that you use this over a 
a primer. It just works really well. It does have dimethicone in it, and you've heard me talk about how much I sometimes hate dimethicone. Not all dimethicone is created equal. There are so many different types of it, and the quality matters. This has really nice quality ingredients every time I have used it. It's been a little while since I used it. I actually just ordered a new jar because people have been asking me about it, and I was like, let me refresh my memory of how it feels on the skin. It does have a little bit of a fragrance to it. I, you guys know, I think that's perfectly fine. I love the whole package when it comes to skincare products, and this one, it feels like the fragrance just really fits it well. That said, you know, if Selena does deal with any kind of issues with her skin, with her lupus, if it makes her skin sensitive, if she gets the rash that can come with lupus, I would maybe actually avoid fragrance. But we could see in that jar, she has used all of it, like it was down to the bottom when she was using it. So that means that her skin has been totally fine with it. You know, the other thing that she pointed out that I think is just so, it's, it happens to all of us. You know, we start off younger and we make it all about makeup. We just try to cover all of our imperfections, anything that's happening with our skin. We try to fix it with makeup or we'll just like grab like one skincare product or put on some moisturizer to try to fix it. But instead, you know, as time shifts and we start to really get to know ourselves, we realize how important skincare can be and that your makeup doesn't look good unless you have the right base, the right skincare routine and the right skincare products in that routine to make your makeup look good. And then you start to realize maybe it's not all about wearing a lot of makeup, it's about that glowing skin underneath. So I love that she's pointing that out. I mean, someone who started as a seven-year-old wearing wearing makeup all the time. I can't even imagine what my skin would look like, you know, after all of that makeup, being on set all the time, and then not having a skincare routine. It actually makes me a little bit sad that there wasn't somebody there to help educate her on what she should be using on her skin at the time. That's definitely been a rule that I keep <laughs> cute now, this routine of making sure my face looks good and feels good. I've for sure had acne, and usually it's kind of all in the T-zone. Um, I try not to like pick at anything. <laughs> Sometimes that's hard. Now, next up is for... So she's saying that she deals with acne and it makes a lot of sense that she would go in with a cleanser in the morning then because she's saying that she deals with acne in this area. You know, I go back to the fact that she has lupus and lupus is an autoimmune disease that you have to, you have to deal with and it messes with your hormones. It messes with your skin. It messes with your hair. It just messes with you in general and it can be very hard hard to deal with your acne. This is actually one of the reasons why it's so important to go see a dermatologist when you're dealing with acne issues or any kind of skin issues, is you might actually find out that you're dealing with some type of a health issue that's causing your skin to have some type of a reaction. I'm not saying that that's what's causing her acne. It could just be as simple as, She's just got acne. But it really does bring that up that, you know, sometimes what's happening on the inside does present itself on the outside. And that's why it's really important to see a dermatologist. As far as not picking, honestly, it's the key. It took me years to stop picking at my pimples. But once I finally stopped picking, I found that I was breaking out less. It's like kind of like a cycle. When you pick your pimples, um, even though it's like, Everyone does it. What it really comes down to is you're creating this cycle with your acne. You are picking your pimples, it's causing them to be irritated, to stand out more, to then have hyperpigmentation after that makes it look like you've got more acne. Sometimes you're making them more inflamed so it looks worse. Sometimes you're spreading the bacteria that causes the acne so then you're getting acne in more places. You just create this cycle that just keeps on going. So if you can stop yourself from picking, it really is one of the most important things that you can do for your skincare routine and for your skin is, is just stop. It takes time. I'm not saying if you stop picking for a week or two that suddenly your acne is gonna go away, but it really is amazing to see that your acne will slow down if you stop picking over time. And I'm not sure if she's a person that deals with hyperpigmentation, but I know that I do. I get post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation anytime I have some kind of a pimple, even when I don't pick at it. It's just way worse if I do pick at it. You know, she's not using, for instance, brightening ingredients in the morning. I'm over here like vitamin C, alpha arbutin, tranexamic acid, any type of, you know, glycolic, anything I can to try to get rid of the hyperpigmentation. And what I've found is not picking, you know, it helps it so that I don't have to deal with it so much because I'm already prone to it. So if she's especially not using some type of ingredient that helps to brighten her skin, it's really important and I'm saying this for you guys, it's really important for you to not pick if you're not gonna also use any kind of ingredient that helps to, I guess, stop the hyperpigmentation or get rid of it. The Drunk Elephant sunscreen. 
I like to put sunscreen on because not only is it important to keep your skin looking fresh, but I have lupus. So being in the sun is, you know, kind of difficult for me. So I like to put my sunscreen on. My sun's 30 SPF. When you are taking care of your- All right, so first, I am so happy to see that she is using sunscreen in the morning. Sometimes makeup has, you know, SPF in it, and what I find is a lot of people will be like, oh, my foundation has SPF in it, so I'm not gonna put on a separate SPF, but you really need to. And she points out that she has lupus and it's really important for her to put on sunscreen. That's really an understatement. Someone like her is even more sensitive to the sun than all of us. I was actually talking to my friend, Dr. Nina Desai. She's a board certified dermatologist. I have lots of videos with her on the channel. We were talking about this and people that have lupus are prone to something called a butterfly rash. And it is a condition that happens because of the lupus. It can be very painful. It can make their skin really red in this area, but honestly, it can make the skin inflamed all over the body and it's triggered by the sun. So she not only needs the sun protection to look better and feel better and you know not deal with hyperpigmentation and stuff and even to also prevent skin cancer but she especially needs it because she needs to protect her skin so she's not triggering this rash that she can get from her lupus I'm a little bit bummed out to see her using this drunk elephant sunscreen not because I don't like drunk elephant but because I hate that product from them it's like one of my least favorite products from drunk elephant I did a whole review if you guys want to watch it I don't know it's just it's not my ideal sunscreen and I would I will say for someone who's dealing with lupus, you really want to use an SPF 50. I always say like, you know, SPF 30 is fine, especially if you're going to be reapplying it during the day. But again, she has photosensitive skin because of her lupus. So she really wants to use a higher SPF if she can. Mineral sunscreen is very important for her, but also broad spectrum protection. So when you look at SPF factor, SPF factor is just the protection you're getting from UVB rays. UVB is the rays that burn your skin, but UVA rays, you need that protection too, because again, you want to protect your skin from being triggered. When you're dealing with lupus, you don't want to trigger that sensitivity that you already have, that rash that you could get. So you need to know the protection that you're getting from UVA rays as well. And in the US, we unfortunately don't have that kind of a measuring system yet. So I love, love Korean sunscreens. And I actually had a hard time finding a perfect one for Selena just because of her lupus. But I did do a little bit of research. And instead of the Umbra, what I would recommend for her is one by Etude House. It is their Sunprise Mild Airy Finish Sun Milk SPF 50. PA++++. If it were up to me, I'd want her to use a PA++++ with four pluses because that's the highest level of broad spectrum protection you can get, the UVA protection. I think a lot of people don't realize that the percentage of the zinc oxide or the titanium dioxide doesn't necessarily matter when it comes to the overall broad spectrum protection. People look for, you know, that percentage and they think like, oh, I must be getting even more protection, but that's not necessarily true. And I don't know all of the science behind it, but what I do know is it doesn't necessarily mean that 20% zinc oxide versus like 10% zinc oxide is gonna give you more protection. It's all about what the product says that it protects you from. So if it says that it's an SPF 50 and it has PA++ protection, that's what you wanna look for. This is also a completely mineral sunscreen, which is super important for her. Not because I think that mineral sunscreens are better than chemical sunscreens, but because I know that sometimes chemical sunscreens can trigger a little bit of sensitivity in people who have already sensitive skin. This sunscreen also has that light milky texture that I just love about Korean sunscreens. And I haven't personally tried it yet, but I just placed an order for it because I'm like, why was it so hard to find an all mineral sunscreen that feels like it's light, that also is SPF 50 from a Korean brand? So this is the first time that's really stood out to me that's hard to find one from a Korean brand. So I, I just ordered it so I can tell you guys if I like it or not. One thing I do want to point out is that it does have a little bit of fragrance in it, but, she did use Tatcha's Dewy Skin Cream and that has fragrance in it too, so I assume that she's totally fine with fragrance. Take care of your skin, you're taking care of your body and your mind and soul, just because I think it's all connected. So I notice when I get stressed or something, I tend to break out more or I, I don't, I get lazy with my routine. So I, I feel like 
I feel like it's become just a part of it and I just deal with whatever I got that day. Next, I'm gonna be using in the last few videos I've been reviewing, I feel like, you know, there's been this theme lately where people are like, you know, skincare is self-care. And I say this all the time. I, you know, I realize that for some people that self-care might be, you know, having just a very straightforward skincare routine, something very easy, two, three steps, that is fine. And then for some people it might be, you know, five, six, even 10 steps. It's really all about what makes you feel good. And I love that she's pointing that out. You know, it's her self care. She really likes to take care of herself. And I, and I just love that we're acknowledging this. I think it's something that we all desperately need these days, considering, you know, the way that the world is gone and stuff. It's just been such a crazy year. And if you can just do something small for yourself, it makes a huge difference in your life. So usually I would stop the video right now because she's about to get into the makeup portion of her routine, but I wanted to see her foundation. I actually wanna talk about why I choose not to usually use separate makeup primers these days, and that's because of what, what goes into the foundation. So I wanna just watch her put it on and then we'll talk about it. My weightless foundation. So I kind of just start by making dots along my face, my applicator kind of tends to, it'll follow wherever you put it. And then blend that in. So, that's my foundation. Um, make sure that even in between, if, you're, if you have a tan or if you're checking something, I always kind of go in here every now and then because I get spray tans. Next. You know, so one thing I wanna point out is that I didn't see her actually bring a lot of her skincare down, but I think it was the way that the video was edited. But in case, especially if you are pulling your makeup down to your neck, you wanna make sure you're really bringing your skincare products down to your neck. You know, I talk about like even the chest area and stuff, and especially the sunscreen. That was the other thing that I had left out when I went on that whole tangent about her sunscreen. She probably didn't use enough. We couldn't really tell because of the way that they edited the video, but she especially wants to use the right amount of sunscreen. If you're unsure of the amount of sunscreen that you're supposed to use, I always just say you just wanna make sure you're giving a nice, even layer covering all of your skin that is exposed with your sunscreen. But there is this technique that I'd been seeing all over Instagram and I mentioned it in another video and I couldn't remember who it was that I saw a post about it, but somebody on Twitter mentioned to me that it is a woman named Tiara Willis. She is makeup for women of color on Instagram. I will leave a link below in the description box to her account. She is awesome. I love some of the tips that she posts on there. And one of her tips was to put sunscreen down two of your feet fingers and that's the proper amount of sunscreen that you should be using for your face. It's a really good technique, but really at the end of the day, you should just be covering every bit of skin that is exposed to the sun. So just throwing that out there, if you're gonna be using your sunscreen and everything, you always wanna just bring it down. All right, so the reason why I wanted to look at the foundation is one, I wanted to just see how it lays on the skin because I'm really into foundations, but two, people always ask me why their foundation doesn't sit right. What is it that they're doing wrong with their skincare routine? Or what is it about this foundation? Or was it the sunscreen that they put on? And something I wanted to point out is that most of the time I tend to not use a separate primer. You guys have probably heard me say that. I like to use a nice moisturizer. And I said that the Tatcha one is perfect for it. And that's because of the types of ingredients that are in these products. The Tatcha has dimethicone in it, different dimethicones in it. And those dimethicones, you've heard me complain for sure about too much dimethicone, but these ones are really nice. And they really create this nice base for your makeup. And not to mention, you need to have that hydration and that bounce and that plumpness that you get from a really nice moisturizer. So I think that using something like the Tatcha Dewy Skin Cream is perfect under your makeup. Now, if you look at the foundation, for Rare Beauty, the reason why you tend to not need separate primers anymore is because really good foundations these days already have all the priming ingredients in them. So they set themselves. You don't even need that separate primer, especially if you're using a really nice moisturizer that works well with it. What I tend to find is if you look at something like Benefit Professional, which is kind of one of those like OG primers, if you look at it, it has a lot of the same types of ingredients that you're getting in the foundation and also in the Tatcha moisturizer. So you don't really need that one. 
and in fact probably in the sunscreen too since she did use a sunscreen underneath so you don't want to get too many of these same types of ingredients and I'm not talking about hyaluronic acid or glycerin or any of those hydrating ingredients what I'm talking about are the ingredients that are there for texture they create this film on your skin and that's what they're meant to do it, it might sound strange to say a film but that's what they're meant to do and that texture is meant to protect your skin and then also create a nice base and you guys have felt it it's that like soft almost like silky powdery feel that's what a lot of these ingredients are doing they're creating that nice powdery feel i guess and it's a perfect base for your makeup and it also makes it look nice and matte and makes it look nice and smooth and helps it sit well and adhere to your skin that said this message is for the people that always ask me what they're doing wrong with their makeup and their skincare, that it's not laying nicely or it's pilling. If you're using a moisturizer, a sunscreen, a primer, and a foundation, and it lays perfectly and you love the way your skin looks, by all means, keep doing it. I just wanted to point that out because I get this question a lot. So that was Selena Gomez and her very short morning skincare routine. The most important part was that she uses her sunscreen. She just needs a little bit more. She could benefit from a higher SPF for sure. But I loved seeing what she was doing. I love just reminiscing about Selena and thinking about you know all the things that she's done, how far she's come, and now seeing her as a full-blown businesswoman. It's really inspirational. I love seeing that. And I love just knowing that she's wearing her sunscreen. So I hope this video was helpful. Ask me in the comments any of your questions. I'll leave a link below in the description box to the original video. You can find me on Instagram, at Susan Yara, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.